how will the Detroit Lions fare at getting to the quarterback in 2024? You guys know I was a big proponent of getting a pass rusher to go opposite Aiden Hutchinson. And while we did not make the move that I wanted in free agency or the NFL draft, we did get some pieces in free agency. Marcus Davenport, we brought in Matthew Betts, the defensive player from the CFL, the Canadian Football League. And I am intrigued to see how this season is going to pan out. I believe sacks are a direct correlation to winning football teams and winning when it matters. You have to be able to get the quarterback down if you want to be able to win football games. With that being said, the Detroit Lions brought in a new defensive line coach, Terrell Williams. He was very coveted, came from the Tennessee Titans. And according to Aaron Glenn, it looks like that the Detroit Lions are going to be better at getting to the quarterback this NFL season. But before we go to what was said by Aaron Glenn about Terrell Williams and the defense overall, let's see where the Detroit Lions ranked when it came to getting to the quarterback, not just pressures, but sacks. We know that Aiden Hutchinson was one of the pressure leaders, if not the pressure leader of the 2023 NFL season. If we go here, these are the bottom sack uh, teams, the, the teams with the least amount of sacks, the Carolina Panthers. In my opinion, it's no surprise that this number correlates to the fact that this was the first team, the team with the first overall pick in the NFL. The Chicago Bears had 30 at number two. They were going to go New Orleans Saints, Arizona Cardinals, uh, New York Giants, New England Patriots, Washington Commanders, the Jacksonville da Jaguars, and the Detroit Lions. Now, what are you? Oh, they're off the screen. And then finally, the Los Angeles Rams uh, round out the top 10. If we go top 15, Denver Broncos, Minnesota Vikings, Philadelphia Eagles, Cincinnati Bengals, and the Green Bay Packers round up right around the middle of the list. Now, what will you notice? You know, I'm always paying attention to statistics and fact and analytical data, right? So if we look at getting to the quarterback, the sack numbers have a several connections, but one that stands out to me is out of the teams with the least amount of sacks in the National Football League for 2023, what do you see? These are the only two, the Detroit Lions and the LA Rams that went to the playoffs, right? The only two out of the bottom 10, the Detroit Lions ranked 24th, the Los Angeles Rams ranked 23rd. Now, both of these teams were carried to the playoffs by their offense. That's what I want you to see. And then you go up. The Falcons didn't make it. The Denver Broncos didn't make it. The Minnesota Vikings didn't make it. The Philadelphia Eagles made it. But that was because they got off their offense again, right? So a lot of times the offense in these times will carry the team to the as far as it goes. And that was a direct correlation to what the Detroit Lions did in 2023. Our offense is the reason that we won the number of games we did. A lot of times our offense would have to bring us back. But what did Aaron Glenn have to say when he got in front of the media just a few days ago? Said, listen, this is coming from all Lions. Everybody wants sex. We have a guy that's going to do a heck of a job no matter what the situation is. And I'm talking about Hutch. Glenn said, He's going to get his numbers just because that's who he is, and I attest to that. The thing we want to make sure is the thing we want to make sure we do is make sure that other guys get those numbers too. I feel like we have one of the best, if not the best, D-line coach coaches in the in the league. He's going to do a heck of a job to help the technique part of how to do that. He continues, so listen, we all want sacks, and you're right. The sacks don't really state exactly how good you are as a defense. You look at Hutch. He was up there as far as pressures. Glenn explained further. The thing is, we want to make, the, make sure those pressures turn into sacks. We want to do that across the board with everybody we have, so there's going to be some guys that step up in that area. So Aaron Glenn seems to know exactly what we all know, that we are going to have to get to the quarterback. Hutch is going to get his numbers. Started off kind of slow last year. A lot of people was ready to start criticizing him. And then he comes alive. He surpasses the total that he got last year and then wind up notching three sacks in the NFL playoffs for a total of 14 and a half on the season. But the question is, 
who is going to be able to help Hutch, whether it's the opposite opposite side of him or the middle of the football field. We have yet to find out. Here's what he had to continue to say about Terrell Williams. He says, listen, the technique, that way that he goes about coaching, very confident, his intelligence about that position too, Glenn said. I've been around some good ones. Ryan Nelson is actually the coordinator in Jacksonville. I've been around him for a while, and they're comparable as far as knowledge for defense. And he'll and he believes exactly what I believe when it comes to D line play. So what I'm hearing from Aaron Glenn is that between the talent that we have on our team, his coaching and Terrell Williams coaching, that we are going to get to the quarterback. So the question that I have to you is, who is going to do you think the Detroit Lions are going to have more than 41 sacks for the 2020? for NFL season just to put it in reference if we look for let's let's flip this all right so we look from the bottom up let's look from the top up as far as getting sex all right now this is a very y'all listen y'all be getting mad at me man but I, I a lot of stuff that I base is analytic and it's like okay well sacks don't mean everything that's true I mean our team is indicative of the fact that sacks don't mean anything because we had we were ranked in the bottom third in getting to the quarterback, but yet we were the third seed and we went to the NFC title game. I myself, my personal opinion, and this is not a knock or a shot on anybody, is I strongly believe that the our inability to get to the quarterback is why we lost the is why we lost the NFC title game. I know a lot of people, okay, it was the secondary, it was Ben Johnson. It was a lot of factors. But at the very beginning of the year, in the middle of the year, right around the trade deadline, I made a video said that our pass rush would be the, be the end of our season. That's just my personal opinion, and I think that um, we need to do better. Now, if we look at the – let's look at the top, the leaders in getting sacks, and we've been over this quite a, a few times. How many of these teams went to the playoffs? All right? We have 14 teams in the playoff. We already established that two of the bottom – the – Two of the 14 teams uh, that went to the playoffs were in the bottom 10, right? The Lions and the LA Rams, okay? The Baltimore Ravens, they were the highest seed in the AFC. They went to the playoffs. They got 60. The Kansas City Chiefs, they went to the playoffs. They had 57, so that's now two. The Miami Dolphins, they went to the playoffs. That's now three. The Buffalo Bills, they went to the playoffs. That's now four. So that's four out of the 14 teams that – went to the playoffs, that led the league in sacks. The Indianapolis Colts, they almost made it. Should have, They were one first down away from pretty much going to the playoffs. The Cleveland Browns, they went to the playoffs, so that is five. Los Angeles Chargers, they did not. The New York Jets, they did not. The San Francisco 49ers, they pretty much round out the top ten. That is six, right? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers is seven. The Pittsburgh Steelers is eight. The Seattle Seahawks, they did not make it. The Dallas Cowboys is nine, right? The Houston Texans is 10. And the Green Bay Packers round out at 11. So then you look at the Detroit Lions, the Los Angeles Rams, and it's one more team that I'm missing. But if you look in the top 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, stopping with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 1, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight should have been there. Eight, seven of the top, seven of the top sack teams went to the playoffs. If you look at the bottom, right, only two of the bottom teams at getting to the quarterback went to the. That's not a coincidence. Now, as far as going all the way, there are other features that are in place there, right? I just I. And I think that's that's why I, I had the reaction that I had. For those of you who are new to the channel, I have been literally talking about a pass rush for three years. It, it's actually been before that when I had another channel, when I was doing the content on my other channel. So I hope that Aaron Glenn and Terrell Williams are those two gentlemen combined can scheme something up that we can start getting to the quarterback. And with the addition of DJ Reader. Uh, Aline McNeil, we don't know what's going to happen with Broderick Martin. Is he going to be a factor for 2024? Um, Marcus Davenport, Matthew Betts, a healthy James Houston. How often are we going to get to the quarterback? That is, 
yet to be seen. I must, like I said, my personal belief is if we were up there, if with, with the offense that we had, for instance, if we were the Baltimore Ravens, if we had their defense, not only their defense, but if we just got get to the quarterback as much as they, if we had that ability, I think we make and win the Super Bowl. That's just my honest opinion, right? So that's why I had such a fit, and I am such a strong believer in the pass rush. I am a believer in the secondary as well. I think they complement each other, but this is what I believe. I believe that a healthy, a legitimate pass rush, a legitimate front four will help a subpar secondary. I don't necessarily believe that it's the other way around. I do think that a Terry on Arnold, a in his rake straw, I, I believe that those guys, um, you know, Amik and, and Carlton, they will help the pass rush, but I think the pass rush helps the secondary more. So I don't think it's just like, well, you know, the secondary does nothing, but I think because the average quarterback has 2.4 seconds to throw the football, and that's because of a pass rush. Just my opinion, it's not, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the secondary, right? If you're going to throw the football, in 2.4 seconds, you're throwing it because there is a defender in your face. That's just my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This channel is made possible by viewers, subscribers, and members just like you. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself and each other. And as always, go Lions.